Hello everyone and welcome to another math tutorial. In this video, we're going to go over an application of the determinants that we worked on in the previous video called Kramer's Rule. Kramer's Rule is going to allow us to solve systems of equations. So the same types of problems that we had used substitution and elimination method on in the previous chapter, we're going to learn how to do that with determinants of matrices. Okay, to get us started with Kramer's Rule, we're going to look at a two by two system of equations. And once we go over the pattern and establish how to do this and practice it with two by twos, it'll be pretty simple to make kind of an extension of this process to a three by three system of equations. So let's jump into kind of maybe a, a formula um, and, and kind of talk about the pattern that we're going to use to solve for, for X and Y. Uh, so uh, first off, for the X, and it's the same for the Y, we are going to create a fraction of two by two determinants. So I'm going to have a two by two determinant in the numerator. We're going to have a two by two determinant in the denominator. And it's going to be exactly the same for the Y. We're going to put a two by two determinant on top. And we're going to put a two by two determinant on bottom. Okay. Now, when you look at this system, it's, I think it's natural to see the way it's set up with X and Y on the same side of the equation. It's kind of natural to see this as the makings of a matrix, as like a two by two matrix. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the X's and Y's out and I'm just going to use the coefficients. And the, the four numbers that make up the coefficients make up what I call a coefficient matrix. And the denominator of the X and of the Y is going to simply take this coefficient matrix. So I'm going to want down here A, B, C, D, and over here the exact same thing. A, B, C, and D. Okay, so always put the coefficients in the denominators of those fractions. Now, for the numerator, we got to get a little bit tricky. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these numbers right here and we're going to insert them in for the coefficient numbers. Now, if you are solving for x, you're going to replace the x coefficients with these two numbers. If you are solving for the y, you're going to replace the y coefficients with these two numbers. Okay, so here's what that's going to look like. Over here on the x, I'm going to put these two numbers, which are e and f, in the x column, where the, the a and c were, right? And over here on the y, uh, the y column, I'm going to replace b and d with those two numbers, e and f. Now the other numbers are just going to stay the other numbers. So right here, these y numbers, b and d from down below, I'm just going to use those numbers. And over here, we need the x numbers to fill in here, the a and c numbers. Okay, So that's it. That's the setup. Is we're just going to do a bunch of 2 by 2 determinants. Uh, as we learned in the last video, these 2 by 2 determinants are super easy and fast to compute because it's just diagonal minus diagonal and we're just going to do that all over the place here. Uh, so, so really easy, quick calculations if we just know how to set up all these determinants. All right, let's do a couple of example problems to kind of get the hang of this. Okay, so we have a system of equations here. We have uh, two equations with two variables, x and y. It's a pretty standard looking problem. I'm going to solve this with Kramer's rule. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my x and y uh, fractions here. So x is going to equal, I need a fraction of two by two determinants. And y is the same thing. Let's put them out here. Now, the denominator of both of these fractions is going to be my coefficients. So 3 
Uh, make sure this minus 5y is treated as a negative 5 and then 2, 7. And it's going to be exactly the same over here. 3, negative 5, 2, and 7. Now what changes is the numerator. So we're going to insert these numbers, right? The 22 and negative 6. If we are solving for the x, put them where the x variables are, which is at the front. So we're going to put 22 and negative 6 there. And then the y numbers are just going to stay the y numbers, negative 5 and 7. Over here, when we're solving for y, the 22, negative 6 are going to go in where the y numbers go, which is in this second column. And then the x numbers, 3 and 2, are just going to stay the x numbers. Okay, so there is our setup. It's a, it's a very easy setup once you kind of get the, the, the pattern down. And now we can just jump right into these determinants. So let's see how this plays out. Uh, here we're going to do 22 times 7, which is 154, minus negative 6 times negative 5, which is 30, divided by denominator, we've got 3 times 7, which is 21 minus 2 times 5, which is negative 10. So we've got 154 minus 30, which is 124, divided by 21 plus 10 is 31. So we've got 124 divided by 31, which is 4. So x equals 4. Over here on this one, let's do the same kind of work. We're going to start with 3 times negative 6, which is negative 18 minus 2 times 22, which is 44 over, now we've already done this and this, right? We did it right here, and we know that the answer is 31. So let's just go ahead and bring that up, 31. There's no sense in doing the same work over again. So now we have negative 18 minus 44, which is negative 62 over 31, so y equals negative 2. So we've got a solution of 4, negative 2. That is Kramer's rule to solve a 2 by 2 system of equations. All right, I've got one more 2 by 2 system of equations to, to practice, to show in this video. If you think that one example problem we just did was enough to, to kind of give you this, uh, the rundown of what to do, you might want to go ahead and pause the video right here and see if you can set it up and solve it on your own. And then once you're ready to check your answers, you can push play and kind of fast forward to the answer part and check and see if you've got it. Uh, so let's go ahead and get going. Uh, again, pause it if you want to try it on your own. Otherwise, you can just sit back and, and relax and, and watch me work through another example. I'll start out by getting my x and y determinant fractions set up. Alright, on the denominator of these two fractions is going to go just the four coefficients that I see here. I want my coefficient matrix. So 3, 10, 7, and negative 2, and then the exact same thing here. 3, 10, 7, and negative 2. In the numerator, so the 68 and the 32, those numbers are going to replace the x numbers when I'm solving for x. Those numbers are going to replace the y numbers when I'm solving for y. And so here, with these y numbers still needed, we're just going to drop down 10 and negative 2. And over here, the x numbers are still needed, so we're going to drop down 3 and 7. All right, now we should be ready to start to do these diagonal products and work through these determinants. And the numbers are a little bit bigger here, so if you need to get a calculator out, you know, by all means, grab a calculator. We don't want to mess up the computations on, on something like this. All right, so we'll start here in the numerator. I'm going to do 68 times negative 2. So 68 times 2. I'm going to have negative 136 minus 32 times 10 is 320 
divided by 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 minus 7 times 10 is 70. So we've got negative 136 um, minus 320, which is Four hundred and fifty six, negative four hundred and fifty six divided by negative seventy six, and that works out to be six. So x equals six. Now, over here on the y variable, we're going to do three times thirty two, which is ninety six minus 7 times 68, which is 476. We already know, again, this denominator is the same determinant as we saw here. And we already know that's negative 76 simplified, so there's no reason to work it out again. 96 minus 476 is negative 380. We're going to divide that by negative 76, and that works out to be y equals 5. So we have a solution to this system of the ordered pair 6, 5. Okay, I'd like to finish with one example of Kramer's rule being used to solve a 3 by 3 system of equations. Uh, I just want to jump right into a problem because it's the exact same uh, pattern of setup that we used for the 2x2 two two systems to set up and solve a 3x3 three three system with Kramer's rule. Uh, so let's begin by just kind of writing down all of our x, y, and z determinant fractions uh, and then we'll get to solving them. And, and this is going to be a little bit more to write here so I would suggest writing, uh, or at least I'm going to write, try and write small enough to, to be able to fit all this work in. Uh, so, so here we go, let me set them all up and I'm just going to speed up the playback kind of as I set all this up. Okay, just as in the two by two systems, we're gonna put the coefficients in the denominator. So all the denominators are gonna look the same and they're gonna look like this. Okay, so there's my three denominators. Notice they are all the same. Notice they are all just the numbers you see here as if this is a three by three matrix. Now, when we solve for the X, Y, and Z, we're gonna take these numbers, the 22, 21, and 47, and we're just gonna insert them into the matrix in the column whose variable we're trying to solve. So when we're trying to solve X, we're gonna put 22, 21, 47, into the X column. When we're trying to find Y, we're gonna put those three numbers into the Y column. And when we're solving for Z, we're gonna put them at the end into the Z column. And then the other columns from down below, we're just gonna copy those up. So these Y numbers are gonna stay as they are. The Z numbers are gonna stay as they are. And then same thing over here, the X numbers are gonna stay the X numbers, the Z numbers are gonna stay the Z numbers, and then over here, the X's are gonna stay the X's, and the Z's, of course, are gonna stay as they are, or sorry, the Y's are gonna stay as they are. All right, so there's our setup, um, just like the two by two uh, system, only now we have to do three by three determinants. And, of course, if you remember the way I taught you to do these three by three determinants, we have to take the first two columns, put them behind the matrix, then go through all those diagonals. And so I think I'm gonna run out of room to fill them in right here. So what I'm gonna do is pull up a blank sheet of paper. I'm gonna write four matrices down. Let's do this, let's put some labels on this. Um, this one here in the numerator, I'm gonna call this D, 
sub x. That's my determinant for the x variable. This one I'm going to call d sub y. That's my determinant, determinant for the y variable. And this one I'm going to call d sub z. And the denominator, I'm just going to call these d. They're all the same. Okay, so I'm going to pull up a blank sheet of paper where I have a little bit more room to do this scratch work. I'm going to get it all set up, um, and I'll just I'll make the the speed of that playback super fast. And, and then once we do the that work, we'll come back to this example and we'll finish the problem. Okay, there we go. Uh, the marathon of three by three determinants is over. I've computed everything. I only found one error in my work as I, uh, as I rechecked everything real quick. Um, so I corrected that one, but I've got three, three numbers, or at least four numbers now. Let's take these answers for my determinants respectively, and let's bring them back to the other slide where we had the uh, system of equations set up. All right, bringing our scratch work answers back, my determinant for x was 252 divided by my determinant, which was 63, and 252 divided by 63 tells me that x is 4. And for my y, the determinant of y was negative 189 divided by the same 63 tells me that y equals negative 3. And on the Z, my determinant was 441. And that divided by 63 makes the Z 7. And just like that, we've got our X, our Y, and our Z. So our solution to the system is 4, negative 3, and 7. So I'm gonna have you practice that a little bit on your assignment for, for this particular lesson. Uh, you might decide that uh, in the end, doing all these three by three determinants is a lot of work and it's more computational investment than you are interested in making. And if that's the case, you can always divert back to substitution and elimination methods for solving uh, these three by three systems. I do think that Kramer's rule is a nice, quick, easy way to do this, the very simple two by two systems though, because those determinants are much, much quicker to, um, to compute. So, so that's it for this video on Kramer's rule. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.